Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Getting Down to Business. I'm Ashley Curtis, Career Counselor and Internship Coordinator with the MUMA College of Business. And I'm Jill Brown, Academic and Career Advisor. If you are new to our podcast, welcome. And we have interviewed some amazing students, faculty, Tampa Bay businesses, and today is no different day. We've got amazing guests here. And our focus, as we mentioned, starting off the season is really to emphasize the latest information on internships, building connections, and helping students be competitive, developing their skills and leadership and such. So Thanks for that, Jill. I am so excited. Today we have with us from USF's Hospitality Society Student Club, Yazem Kunt and Lauren Daly. Um, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for inviting us. Um, go ahead and share with our listeners a little bit about yourselves and how you came to USF. Thank you. So my name is Lauren Daly and I'm a hospitality professional. I did my undergraduate back in Jamaica in hospitality. Okay. And now okay. I'm doing my master's in hospitality. And I'm really grateful. I would say to persons, at least I normally say to persons that USF chose me because um, a friend that I met at a conference we volunteered in back in Atlanta, she shared about a fellowship program that was happening or upcoming and I applied and, and that was it. So here I am today <laughs> at USF and I'm also the treasurer of this wonderful club. Wonderful. Ooh, Thanks for being nice. here. Thank you for inviting us again. My name is Gizem Kunt and I'm one of the graduate students in the USF Hospitality Management and also my undergrad is from Translation and I'm also social media marketing manager of the Hospitality Society. What brought me USF is that um, I was working in, in Turkey, in Istanbul, with my CEO, British Pakistani. And when the COVID hit my uh, country, it was very devastating and um, horrible. So economically, we were bad. And he encouraged me that I'm very like full of um, experience in the industry since I'm, I've been working in the industry in completely 10 years. Wow. And he said that, why don't you take your skills to the upper level and why don't you just go to the States or Canada or Europe so that you can obtain your master's degree and even your PhD. So he encouraged me and then I started to apply some universities and then here I am. I love it. I think we are extremely lucky to have you both. So yes. thank you. All right. We like to play a little game with our guests. So bear with us. <laughs> um, and so we're going to just ask you a few questions. All right. Get to know you a little better Super before easy. we dive into sure. deep stuff. <laughs> yes. No, we promise. So what is your, I'll ask, you can each answer. What is your go-to social media? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. USF Muma Hospitality, Instagram. Woo! USF Hospitality Society <laughs> directly on LinkedIn. And we have also another one, USF Hospitality and Tourism Management. Okay. So you can see that. Okay. And on Bulls Connect, you can directly search as USF Hospitality Society. I'm waiting for you. And on the Snapchat, sometimes I do share my own private account, okay. but you can see everything. And also they can find us on Wednesdays in the Bulls Market. Should we not be surprised that there are so many uh, ways <laughs> to no, reach not. out? Uh, the marketing, they've been marketing themselves clearly. So great, great job on that. How about you? Lauren? I'd say Instagram. Okay. Instagram. Okay. Instagram for me. That's my favorite. <laughs> All right, uh, Lauren, we'll start with you for this one. Do you prefer taking your notes um, pencil, paper, or on a computer or some sort of tablet? Uh, I think I do both. The thing is, the, the imperative part of your question is the notes. And for me, I have to take notes. So okay. whether it's pencil or paper or on an electronic device, I have to take notes. Okay. Not going to trust the memory. <laughs> for me, whatever I find closer. Okay. Okay. I can grab a pencil or the laptop. Doesn't matter. See, I'm still so old school. Like I have to write to imprint into my brain in a sense, sometimes typing. So, but I'm curious. I've heard anyway. All right. Last tough question here. Would you rather fly or breathe underwater? Fly. <laughs> fly. Fly. <laughs> fly. No dolphins in the room. Okay. We shall continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So now let's get down to business. Um, tell us about USF's Hospitality Society Student Club. Um, who can join and how often do you guys meet? Actually, we are open to everybody. It's not just only for undergrad hospitality students or only for grad students. Okay. We embrace everybody from every department, mm -hmm. every major, because we always say hospitality is diverse. 
and there is a space for everybody. There is a room for everybody. When we say hospitality, it's not only for cooking or like <laughs> being a chef in the background. It's business analytics, customer relationships, accounting, mm -hmm. finance, revenue management, front of the house, being a nice, you know, mm -hmm. um, welcoming people in front of the hotel. So you can be everything, whatever you want to be in the hospitality. I'm keying on a word you mentioned, which was that space. Yes. It's a space for everyone and yeah. cre also mm -hmm. creating a space. So, exactly. Awesome. Would right. you like to add? Sure. I'd like to add that it actually, you know, what I tell persons is that we live and breathe hospitality in everything we do. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <And laughs> hospitality actually consists of many sub-segments, hospitality and tourism. There is the accommodation, there is the restaurants, there is the entertainment, there's travel and there's meetings. So let's zone in on travel, for example, at an airport. The air traffic controllers, they're parts of hospitality too. You know, if you think about at a theme park, which falls under entertainment, those ride instructors, the maintenance crew, the housekeeping crew, they're exactly. all a part of hospitality. So hospitality is very diverse and we embrace it in so many facets of our life. That sometimes we don't even connect with the fact that we are a part of hospitality. So we really embrace everyone because the industry embraces everything. Exactly. And thank you for sharing that. I think earlier, one of the things you mentioned um when we talk with students, I always talk about is customer service, right? Yeah. And customer services and everything. Right. So, you know, when we talk about students finding internships and how to take those transferable skills, you know, go back to your customer service roots because it's everywhere. Right. Exactly. And, and if I may just add that, you know, for example, now I am working with one of the restaurants on campus. And the teammate that I work with, they're engineers, they're, mm -hmm. you know, computer scientists. And I let them know that you are a hospitality professional, you're a customer service professional. The skills you're learning here, you are able to use them anywhere you go exactly. because we're learning how to interact with each other. We're learning how to give service to the guests, which is the same thing we do internally, because how can your team um, give good service? Imagine you're a maintenance technician. How can you give good service to those that you are that are paying you but then you're not able to communicate with mm. the people you work with yeah, you're so gonna say really, that word communication yeah, yes <laughs> interconnected in on okay. every level yeah okay exactly um i want to ask as a follow-up in that sense too so if a student is interested like how do they join what do they have to actually do they just really need to just go on the Bulls Connect app. That's it, Bulls right? Connect app. Okay. Or we have, of course, undergrad and graduate advisors. Right. Ah. Dr. Faiz and Ali. Or they can directly communicate with us through our social medias mm -hmm. that I mentioned before. Like, it's very easy to reach us when they just shoot us as an like email okay. or DM. We directly say, hey, um... Advisor, Dr. Ali, or even our dean is so active. Mm -hmm. He's always like communicating with us and he directly like replies us and then we start the process. I would expect quick communication to come back from the hospitality <laughs> yeah. club, but that's uh, good for students to kind of know too that the dean is so heavily involved. Exactly. And, and what type of commitment is there for students like time-wise that they may expect by joining? It really does meet once per week, and okay. it's not every week, actually. We are not mm -hmm. strict that much, but of course, we do expect some, uh, for example, volunteering stuff. Mm -hmm. For example, our dean is sometimes distributing emails. This includes internships or volunteer mm -hmm. works that you can obtain and experience in the hospitality industry mm -hmm. it itself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do expect 25 percentage of to participate participation from the participants, but it's not obligatory, obligatory, as Lauren said. Do you meet on campus in Sarasota or virtually or both? Actually, we are traditionally in Sarasota, but mm -hmm. I'm very proud to say this finally, and she's laughing at that too. We are traditionally in Sarasota. However, we just right now got the permission from, um, from the departments as well. Right now, we are serving everything in Tampa too. Mm -hmm. So, they can find us in St. Pete, Sarasota, Tampa. Awesome. Yay. Yeah, yeah, we're hosting new courses on campus. Tampa Bay yes. Business. Yes. yes. Are All there right. any other requirements that our students should be aware of? Service requirements or otherwise? 
So I think uh, Gizem highlighted it earlier um, yeah. for the service requirements, which is to participate in events that we would have, especially voluntary events. Mm -hmm. And it really goes hand in hand with how to get that industry exposure. So let's say, for example, uh, there is a meeting that's been held by the MoMA School of um, Business or specifically by the School of Hospitality. We need some volunteers. We would encourage our club members to participate in that. And should we as a club decide to partner with another institute, uh, mm -hmm. for you know voluntary service then we would encourage persons to join as well so it's as they arise not Wonderful. mandatory internally okay. or externally correct Wonderful. yeah all right then moving on and diving a little deeper um, we mentioned at the beginning that our focus is really helping students to grow their talents mm -hmm. and build networks uh, what would you say and you you kind of touched on some of this I think but just what the Hospitality Society Club can offer students to do just that. I would say that it's what we offer students is the ability to immerse themselves in what the industry is about. And one of the important things that we say to persons is it really is what you put in and, and, yeah. and what you take out of it. This is just the same as with being at work. Mm -hmm. What are you taking out of this experience? So the different things that we engage in, let's say, for example, we might have a session where we talk about personality types. You know, and then from what you learn from this session, how will you then build on what you learned your personality type to be? Or if we talk about leadership styles, you know, are you going to allow the wheels in your mind to turn to say, OK, this is my leadership style or this is my leadership preference? And then how do I see that dynamics happening at play yeah. wherever I am? And what am I going to do about it based on my preference? Because the reality is not we don't all aspire to be leaders and that's OK. But if you are a member of a team, then how will you support your leader or how will you what will you do um, to encourage your leader to go on a better path based on the observations you've seen, based on what you've learned in the club? So it's really it's a hand in hand. We have sessions and then we encourage persons to be able to draw from that and actually utilize that in their daily lives. I would like to emphasize some two things that you said, which was you get what you put in, right? You yeah. get what you give. And that's important in every aspect of life, just like you said. There's salt effort. Right. Yeah. But joining, not just joining or putting it on your resume, but becoming an active participant. Becoming right. itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then pushing it forward, pushing yeah. that mission and vision forward. And then the second thing you mentioned, just getting to know yourself better, different activities that the, the group may do, you know, that's building your brand. And right. that is going to help students as they start to then see themselves in their future career. Exactly. She reminded me one of our courses that we take last semester. Uh -huh. I think she meant that too. <laughs> Hospitality operations. Yeah. We analyze every leadership styles, mm -hmm. philosophies deeply. Oh, wow. And our professor asked us, like, if you were managing a restaurant or a hotel, how would you work with your employees? Uh -huh. We created our own management theory. And we put that to the real <laughs> ship, a cruise ship management. Oh, wow. And we saw at the end, if our management theory is working, <laughs> it was a win-win. And we were like, wow, it's working. And I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that because um, that's actually one of the things that we try to incorporate. So, for example, we might have situational videos. So yeah. let's say that the today's session, uh, meaning in the club, would be, for example, a discussion. You know, we're in a circle and we're talking about something. And the something is a video, which is maybe a bad customer service mm -hmm. or a leader team member relationship. And then we deconstruct. Mm -hmm. what's happening here just to really get the wheels turned and have persons understand this is what really happens in the industry this is what happens in any industry it doesn't have to be True. hospitality True. and then from these moments we're able to learn because the reality is every day that we go out and we put on our clothes we're solving some problem <laughs> the problem is exactly. the guest the problem could be internal the problem could be the system we're solving some problem mm -hmm. and we just have to figure out how to deal with it and it's not something that you really learn in a book it's what yeah, you learn experience. from what you take from life, yeah, experiences, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Those experiential learning opportunities are so important. Which Absolutely. Speaking of, kind of ties <laughs> into my next uh, question <laughs> yes, for it you. Does. So are there internship opportunities Definitely. or networking opportunities through the club? Can you tell us a little bit more? We are very proud on that, too, because maybe if they can, if, Everybody can see that in the USF's um, website news. 
we made an agreement with Aramark McKibben Hospitality Bush Gardens. Yeah. It was like um, very beneficial for all students and very we are very proud on that. So when the students just join our hospitality society, even when they just knock our door, mm-hmm. we have a space for everybody, as I said. So our dean and our advisors are happy to connect them directly. Like, for example, from outside to reaching out a professional, a CEO, vice president is very hard. Yeah. But we have a chance to talk with them via one email, even getting an advice via one call, thanks to our hospitality society and our department, thanks to our dean, Dr. Gian Chabanolo and Dr. Faisan Ali. So um, we have a bunch of internships Mm -hmm. during the summer and winter breaks and sometimes volunteer jobs. Uh, Dr. Gian always sends an email, distributing email to everybody so that you can apply with one click, (laughs) apply now or join now. Or um, if they wanna work in the hospitality and also I forget one important partner main sale lodging as well they are very good too as soon as you graduated or if you want to join them immediately they have a space for you you can work in the food and beverage side or in the sales or mm-hmm. in the front of the house whatever you want to do you can join them so you have only a key in your hand and you can open that door easily so nice. So thank we are so thankful to USF giving that chance to us and also Hospitality Society. Amazing. Some people are asking me how I am so handy because hospitality gives that talent to you. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. when I was working in the hotel, I was like starting my shift at 7 a.m., 7.15. Ta-da, a problem. I'm starting my day. Welcome to normal hospitality <laughs> society. And mm-hmm. one of our classmates one time. Uh, professor was asking why did we choose this department he said I love organized chaos definitely <laughs> this is where you will be working right. but you will love it so either emergency medicine or hospitality same <laughs> exactly. thing emergency <laughs> treatment exactly okay. similar and what I'll add to that is um, to add to what Kizem said is that <laughs> our faculty of course our dean is very engaging mm. and very vibrant but even the other members of the faculty uh, they have various connections with the industry and so when you look at that combined pool of experience and wealth of you know connections and information mm-hmm. uh, they are able to assist us with sharing that information, telling their industry partners, references, their their network about who we have in the club. And that's why it's so important for persons to really engage, participate, what they take out of it. Yeah. Because, uh, and I'm going to take this opportunity because it's important to share it, to mm-hmm. say that here at USF, the School of Hospitality, they are like pushing us up. They want to see us grow, not yeah. to be managers, but to be transformational, whatever transformational means for us, whether we're navigating a system or we're leading a team, whichever side of the coin you see yourself. And so um, USF specifically, at the USF hospitality program, there I can say that for myself, and I know my other teammates say the same thing. And so because of that mindset Mm -hmm. that the School of Hospitality has, um, then you know their network knows that about them so they're all their network is always sharing information okay we have this coming up we have that coming up. do you have any yeah. students mm-hmm. and that trickles down obviously into the club so there are many opportunities to really get your feet wet in the industry but you have to play your part by showing that yeah. you are interested golden tray yeah Yeah. thank you for sharing that because i think so often students when we talk about internships or how do i find a job we typically think oh i need to go to a job board whether it's handshake or another job board but your network is so important Mm -hmm. you know and leaning on your network whether it's with other members of the clubs or your faculty or your professors because as you said um, you know, we have all these really wonderful partnerships. These You're very confident yes. on that. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm a product of that here at um, USF. I shared in the beginning that I met someone at a conference uh, and I'll just make the story very short. I met her at a conference. We didn't know each other before. We both volunteered. 
and I just kept in contact with her. Mm-hmm. Back in Jamaica, she was lecturing at the University of Technology where I did my degree. She had invited me to come and be a guest speaker at her um in her class. And I'm like, what? I just graduated. <laughs> you know, I've, I've only graduated two years now. Who am I to be a guest speaker? But uh, we had forged a <laughs> friendship and, you know, trust, trust the process to befriend someone. You Don't, took a risk. I did take a yeah. risk. And so from that, the relationship just continued to blossom. And there's this random person that I met at a conference that told me about a graduate program. And it all started because you volunteered as well. Yes. That's true. Exactly. And that's something that we really try to push out to students, you know, just take some chances, exactly. volunteer, do something outside of the norm, yeah. and you never know where it might lead. Exactly. And I love, I have to just, yeah, your your passion, we can see it and feel it. And I know it might be hard for our <laughs> listeners, but uh, if you see us on YouTube, you'll feel it too. But knowing the faculty is so passionate and behind you and empowering you yeah. and a sense is like what the chancellor talked to us about the first episode was world domination <laughs> we're moving towards that through the hospitality club and society so thank yeah. you no. and, and i'm going to add a point there that came to my mind before which is that in this technologically advanced era we mm-hmm. have so many systems to do the so work many. for us but the gap is the people skills. Yes, yes, yes. The yes, gap yes. is how do you interact with your peers? Right. Exactly. How can you make a change in the landscape of the guests? Because we're in we're we're competing in it business. Can't all just be chatbots. Right. We're <laughs> competing in business and that personal experience is exactly. what's gonna make the difference. It does. So what have you found are the biggest skills that you've seen that have helped you in your career? Um or as you see other students where you think to yourself oh, these are specific areas where we need to spend more work. Okay, for me, I realized I was lacking with my industry awareness. That's the truth. You know, I was in a box and I realized I needed to really take the initiative for my own brand Mm. and development to see what's going on. So that's what I learned for myself. But outside of that, I'd say um, just your people skills and being customer focused and customer, both the internal and the external customer. Exactly. For me, I already told you that I'm in the industry for 10 years. That brought me a realization about myself. Of course, I do know myself so well. I know what are my weaknesses and my strengths. So in the hospitality, we can separate and divide it into two, soft and technical skills. Mm -hmm. My technical skills, I'm a Gen Z, it's all right. (laughs) I can use 10 fingers. That's amazing. (laughs) But you need to figure that guest problem problem solving is Mm -hmm. the biggest thing that they need to focus on and emotional intelligence being an empathic putting yourself to that guest shoe Mm -hmm. and understanding that person is very important as well and also networking you never know when that person will come to your life again or if will if you will see that person in the another hotel that you will go, you never know. Keep your networks always because that person might come and take you to do somewhere else as yeah. Lauren experienced. Yeah. And, and if I may just plug this in, you know, this is an issue I see happening all the time. And it, 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 it lies on the foundation of me mentioning the internal and external customer. So the scenario is... Even the uh, customer. Right. The scenario is that you are at, let's say, a restaurant and something went wrong. Now, when I am communicating with my team about what went wrong in the presence of the guest, the 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 way I communicate to the guest is different from the way I communicate to my team member. Right. But I'm still on display. I have to be mindful of that. Mm-hmm. So that's why, you know, I'm, I know I've said it before, but just emphasizing for our audience the importance of understanding how we interact with each other mm-hmm. because we're solving the problem. Communication. But... Am I going to speak with her, to her the same as I'm speaking to the guest? Regardless, we're on the same level. It may be a leader team member relationship, but that's important too yeah. in a relationship. And I see that happening so much. And I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves, you know, just that awareness that we're still on display. Mm. And let's just, let's just have our hearts in the game completely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that... 
there were a couple things. I mean, when you were talking about being an empath and I brought a quote we were going to talk about, so I'm going to bring it up now, but it <laughs> it's from Stephen Covey, which was listen with the intent to understand, not the intent to reply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you put yourself into Definitely. that yeah. deep, active listening versus mm -hmm. talking, which we're all, I, I'm very guilty. We, I like to tell stories. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but thinking about the empathy and being a good listener, because if you don't hear the problem, it's hard to then start to figure out a solution. And so anyway, you both bring up really valid yeah. points so that this club and organization mm -hmm. can bring to students and an awareness whether or not they already have experience in the field, yes. but moving forward. Right. Always. Yeah. You know, you've talked a lot about networking, and I think one of the things Jill and I are very curious about is, do you have any tips for students who are afraid? Because I remember my first yeah. time networking, I walked into this room and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Um, so any tips for our listeners on on how to network? I'd say... Uh don't. Email or Dean. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Do not feel intimidated. You have a voice. And yes. you know, recently I saw a video on Instagram and it said take up space. <laughs> and that was so important. Take up space. Uh -huh. But from that, what I want to share is that don't be afraid to talk and to communicate, to just interact. It's just an interaction. To get out of your comfort zone. Just right. speak. Be like, how can I say? Create your own path by yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and don't think what you have to say is invaluable because you don't have the experience. Yeah. Still share it because we're here to coach you. We're here mm -hmm. to listen to you and then say, okay, I hear this. Am I clear on that? And so that's one. Um, don't be afraid to share. And the second thing don't. I would say is to ensure that um, you keep in contact. Yes, don't stop. the follow up. Yes, keep in contact, right? Yes, don't dare to um, see how your big wings are big. <laughs> so you need okay. to open them first yeah. to fly. Yeah. Don't dare to um, communicate. Just communicate. Speak up. Take an action. Um, act encouragingly so that it will just come back to you as the effort of you know effort. Just yeah. 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 And like you were saying, the the follow through. So it is a conversation. Yes. Yeah. So it isn't always so much pressure on yourself, but to start the conversation and then keep it going. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we've come to the end. Is there anything maybe we should say? If there's something you you know we've missed, to tell the audience about the hospitality. You talk other than about join. the hospitality society, actively <laughs> what we are doing, or department, or yeah. dean and advisors, mm -hmm. internships, fellowships, mm -hmm. and the work tips. I think, no, you didn't miss. <laughs> you should all. All right. <laughs> Excellent. We want to make sure we've covered it and hopefully definitely put put this on the map for students to say, hey, this is an opportunity for all majors. All majors. And to so basically enhance and expand opportunities with direct connections to some international companies. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, so before we conclude, we always ask our guests two final questions. Um, so first question I have for you is, what is one piece of wisdom that you wish you would have learned sooner? Hmm. <laughs> oh, tough question. <laughs> right? <laughs> Actually, I know. Okay. It's one of my weakness, still trying to focus on that. Um, I'm like very extrovert. I love speaking so much, you know, <laughs> sometimes I cannot stop and mm -hmm. I have two edges like up and down. Mm. I feel I'm like living my emotions so to the maximum. Yeah, so yeah. when I'm angry or like when I'm afraid or when I'm frustrated, I'm like, la, 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 la. right. But I should first need to analyze the case, what's going on in front of me. And I need to think wise, then take the action. Before I think, I just speak. First, I should stop and think. Sometimes I cannot, you know, wait. You pass along any tips there. I need that pause myself. So yeah. mm -hmm. for me, I'd say the tip that I wish I knew was to keep a record, whether it's a tangible record yeah. of your success, because yeah. there's going to come a time when you're going to need to demonstrate that in a tangible way 
that you know you wish for example for me i wish i would have had some interviews with my team to say mm. what did you like about our time together it's not me being here but our time together and mm -hmm. just have yeah. that as a collection yeah i like that legacy of success yeah yeah, yeah. like it record it very good. Yeah. Well, the other uh, question is about getting in contact if students want to connect with you. You mentioned a few, so if you want to shoot out the... Well, directly on Instagram, it's way easier and way more popular. USF Mumo Hospitality, directly, no dash, no dot, nothing. USF Mumo Hospitality. And also on LinkedIn, directly, it is USF Hospitality Society. You can directly find us. All right. right. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Getting Down to Business. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Um, be sure to go to USF's Handshakes for any career events or job and internship opportunities. And we'll see you soon.